Good morning, everybody. You know what today is, don't you? Oh, yes. I've got to grab it right here. It's Coffee Shop Thursday. Mm. Good stuff, good stuff. Hey, and when you go out, make sure you wear your mask in and out of the uh, restaurant. And keep them on until you're seated and space yourselves out. Because we're still in the midst of the pandemic. Things are getting better. But they're not that great yet all right so be safe be smart be safe um you know as we gather for the drinking our coffee and eating a donut or two or whatever you might get while you're there we all decided hey we're gonna look ahead to the gospel lesson for this sunday and it comes from the second chapter of john yeah oh yeah we're gonna be in john for a while and uh what yeah karen has a question karen yeah what is it Oh, you and Sally were looking at, at what? Oh, you noticed something strange about the lesson this Sunday? What, what's so strange? It's it's the Bible. What, what can be so strange about the Bible, right? Oh, Jesus drives out the money changers and all the people in the temple at the beginning. Hey, yeah, that's right. What else is so strange about it? Oh, you also looked ahead. You cheated a little bit. You said you cheated? Yep, you cheated and you looked ahead and you saw that Jesus in the Gospel of John goes to Jerusalem to celebrate the Passover three times. And this is the first time. But the other Gospels don't do that. What's going on? Who's right? Who's wrong? Well, Karen, number one, why did you cheat? No, it's okay to cheat because, yes, it is true. All of our gospel lessons, even though this is the year of Mark for the common lectionary, we are going to be in the Gospel of John from now right through, I think, Trinity Sunday, pretty much like that. So that's, that's quite a few weeks. That's the whole rest of the Lenten season, the uh, uh, Easter season, and beginning of the Pentecost season. But... Yeah, it, it may be, and we will see Mark again on Palm Sunday, but otherwise, it's all Gospel of John. So, you've done the right thing. You've looked ahead, and you notice some very strange and peculiar things about the Gospel of John. Number one, yeah, Jesus does go to Jerusalem to celebrate the Passover three times. But come on, don't you think he went a lot more than just three times? probably went a lot of times with his family as he's growing up and even in the, that period of, of silence when we don't talk about his his childhood years yeah he was he was there and the other gospels they only mention it once because that's the way the gospels were written they were written to tell a story their story of Jesus and what he means for us so yeah that that's not really a big concern what is a big concern is that Jesus does the money changer thing with the whips and all that right at the very start right at the very start of his ministry that's not the way Matthew Mark and Luke put it they put it at the end Palm Sunday you know and then um things all kind of break loose that week and he's hanging on a cross by Friday uh so what's the big deal with that well let me tell you you know your great grandfather uncle albert well you know uncle albert there's some great stories about him right how'd you get those stories you didn't read it in a book anywhere right no they got handed down to you from great grandpa to grandpa to dad and then to you handed on down through the generations there's stories, stories that maybe even they went through a little bit of tinkering during that transmission. Who knows? The stories of Jesus, especially in the Gospel of John, which was written uh, the year 100 A.D. or even maybe a little bit beyond that. It, it was the last of the Gospels written, and it's pretty apparent that whoever put together the Gospel of John did not have the information that Matthew, Mark, and Luke had. They seem to lay out a more historical journey, whereas the Gospel of John tends to put all kind of stories together in a wonderfully woven tapestry, one that, that shows the glory of Jesus that finally is displayed on the cross. 
It leads up to that point. But unlike last week's prediction in which Jesus is getting closer to Jerusalem now, and he has that what's called the first passion prediction that he would um, be arrested and would suffer and be crucified and then be raised in three days. That all happens toward the end of his life, end of his ministry, let's put it that way. This incident, this passion prediction, because Jesus has it right in there. Um, he said, destroy this temple and in three days I will raise it up. And we see that the the people thought, well, he's talking about this temple that's taken forever to build because it was destroyed once and now it's being rebuilt. No, he's not talking about that. He's talking about his body. And in three days, he will raise it up. So he's predicting that he's going to die, but then be raised to new life. At the very beginning of his ministry, what has Jesus accomplished in the Gospel of John so far? Well, he called his disciples. He went to a wedding where his mom kind of told him to do something and Jesus kind of brushed her off at first. And then he said, all right, I'll do it, which was change the water into wine. Uh, she didn't ask him to do that. She said, hey, help, because they're out of wine. <laughs> and hey, I like to go to those kind of weddings, right, where somebody can do that sort of thing. Nah, not really. But I'll still take the wine. But so he, he's done that. And now he's in Jerusalem for the Passover celebration. It's not the Passover yet in the, in this instance, but you, it was a, a week long type of affair. People were coming in all week long, getting ready to celebrate and they have to do their thing in the temple, which is to make a sacrifice and have the, the lamb uh, would be slaughtered there. And then you take it home and prepare it. All that kind of good stuff had to happen and then get the rest of the meal together too for the Passover. Okay, so Jesus does this at the very beginning of his ministry. He's already pointing to how God is going to be glorified through him. It's going to be, he's going to be glorified through the death of Jesus on the cross. That is not something we like to think about. In fact, our second lesson for this week from Paul is going to be talking about how foolish that is, how crazy that is, but that is is the grounding of our faith. You know, something I didn't mention when I uh, talked about that passage from 1 Corinthians earlier, that the word for foolish actually comes from the, the Greek word that we transliterate as moron, which is kind of a, a nasty term that we throw around when we call people that. But it literally, literally, the crucifixion of Jesus is a moronic idea. It makes no sense. It's crazy. you you got to be out of your head to do that. But we believe it. We believe it. We lift it up because it was the ultimate act of love that Jesus displayed for us when he gave himself up on that cross. And... It was the ultimate act of love when God raised him up again. All right. So we don't have to get very far into the Gospel of John before we find out what is going to happen, how it's all, all going to end up. But come on, the readers of the Gospel of John, they already knew that. <laughs> but what they now have in print in front of them on scrolls is a beautiful story, a story of, of Jesus sayings, his great I am sayings, stories of his signs, signs, and there's seven of them that point toward, point toward him being the one, the Messiah, and it's a, it's a story that is full of intrigue as well, but it's one that brings us ever closer to the one who first loved us, and remember, it's from the Gospel of John, we have that verse. God so loved the world. The world. Not just us and this little select group of people. He loved the whole world that he gave his only begotten son. 
Well, I've been talking a little too long. So everybody, grab a, your cup. Take a sip. Enjoy. Please do it safely. And God's blessings be with you. And get ready. Because Friday is coming. But you know what comes after Friday, don't you? Sunday. I know there's Saturday too, but it might be Friday, as Tony Campola said. But Sunday's coming. Blessings be with you.